Rachel, where are you at? Can you just tell me where you are? Can you please just send me a text and let me know where you are? Just, just tell me in case something happens to you, please. I wanted to spend a morning at the lake and this is so beautiful. Sometimes you need to leave the noise. The noise of the city, of other people, of the online world, and slip away into a quiet paradise to explore not only a new place, but new perspectives on life, new aspects of yourself, with no plans, just open and eager to experience life. For this trip, honestly, I didn't feel like telling anybody. Let me just quietly slip off to some rural lake in Guatemala because I felt like that's what I needed. I told my mom, like, at the airport, like, hey, I'm gonna be headed to Guatemala. I'm trying to figure out how to get on the boat to go to the other side, but I have no idea how to. So the boat is here. I guess you have to wait until there's 10 people, and so far, there's only one, which is me. So I sat at the boat dock like a lost puppy, waiting, waiting, and waiting with only the workers to talk to. Imitación, quiero decirlo. Oh, wig? No, it's not real. It's me. After an hour of waiting, finally, these poor lost souls found their way to the boat, and we were off. After a 45 minute boat ride, I finally arrived in the beautiful, corn-lined, indigenous village of San Juan Laguna. Now this village is not very touristy, but because of that, you get an authentic Guatemalan small town vibe. I only had two hours in this town, but the first thing I wanted to do was see how the Mayan make their traditional clothing. Yo me llamo Flor. La cooperativa se llama Flor del Lago. Flor began to describe to me how her people hand make their indigenous fabrics and design. From the cotton to the thread, everything is done without any kind of machines. I asked her, do you want to use a machine? And she said no, because it would completely change the process. She uses completely natural things to dye the fabric. So things like plants, carrots, even coconuts and parasites to dye the fabric and get these bright, beautiful colors. She started this cooperative as a way to help indigenous women in her community make a living because it's actually pretty hard to do in such a small town. Aquí somos 15 mujeres. Cada fin de mes, yo entrego dinero a la señora. Casi 500 si logro vender más. Mm -hmm. Si no, solo 200, 300 ¿Sí? mensual. 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 No es suficiente. No es suficiente para ellos porque no hay, porque hay muchas cooperativas ya y sí, sí, ya sí. no podemos vender. Sí, hay mucha competencia. Sí, mucho. Sí. Flor shared with me not only her skills but also her language, a language that is slowly fading away with time. ¿Cómo te llamas? Sería Nakabi. 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 Sería en Tupac. Nakabi. Nakabi. Ah, uh -huh. Okay, what's up? Okay, what's up? Uh -huh. Y mi nombre? Sería Nakabi. Nakabi. Es muy difícil. Es difícil. Es difícil. Ahora los niños están cambiando mucho, ya no pueden hablar en Tutuhil. No? Ya solo en, en español. Nuestros mamá y nuestros papá, ellos no pueden hablar en, en español. Mm. Solo en Tutuhil. Nosotros podemos hablar en Tutuhil. Por eso, eso es, es el cambio lo que miro yo en este. What did you guys think of that weaving? I love learning about like the deeper culture here in San Juan. I want some chocolate, okay? I like the weaving, of course, but I want to know more about the chocolate so I can taste it. <laughs> chocolate has always been very important to the Mayas. 
It was believed to be a gift from the gods. It was used in battles and religious ceremonies as currency. And for the single ladies, it had an especially important meaning. So here we have a tradition. If a woman cannot grind, she don't can get married. Really? Yes. Are you married? No. I'm single. <laughs> Is it because you can't grind? Yes. Aww. From the age of 12, the girls start learning how to grind chocolate to sell, but also, of course, to eat. I know I'm a chocolate girl, but I don't really like chocolate that much. But I do like white chocolate. And then this one is like the milk chocolate. Mm. To work off all this chocolate, the lady suggested I go on this beautiful hike. I asked the lady, what is the best thing to do in San Juan if you only have one hour? She said, you have to come to this Mirador. Mirador is viewpoint in Spanish. So let's see what she said that we have to see. One thing to know about this town is that it's full of amazing artists, so on this walk, the stairs will be covered in indigenous artwork. If you guys can't tell, I'm not a hiker. I don't even have water. I'm like dying up here. Let's do this. I think this is the way to go. I mean, nobody's going up this way, but whew, why does it smell like that? I do not know if this is the right way. All these rocks. I don't know, I guess I found the secret way. Would be very much like me. It's just me and the bees up here. Wow. I'm just gonna say that this is the top. That's actually the top right there. That was way off. Of course I completely ignored the stairs. This was not 10 minutes. Oh my God. Just like that, two hours had passed and it was time to go back to the boat and back to my hotel. But let me tell you, this boat ride on the way back was nothing like the boat ride on the way there. Oh my God. I can only describe the boat ride back as the most beautiful ride through hell. Oh my gosh, because we were like riding straight onto the waves, like straight against the waves, every single wave was like bah, bah, what you say bah, bah, huh? the mama, mama? Huh? <laughs> i'm telling you like those waves made like wwe look like a rocking chair <laughs> okay even though it was freaking gorgeous i feel like i had whiplash arthritis sciatica all of that stuff like Oh my god. Shortly after that boat ride, a lightning storm rolled in, signifying the end of my day at the lake. I hope you guys can enjoy these views of this beautiful lightning storm.